we've averted the Great Depression II scenario. We've had the worst recession in the post-war period, and we've lost 7.2 million jobs, and the unemployment rate is still very high at you know, 10 percent. We haven't yet created enough jobs to begin to bring down the unemployment rate. But the good news is that the economy appears to be in the early stages of recovery, but it's still very precarious. Uh, we could have a situation where uh, if uh, we have problems with lending, especially to small, medium-sized businesses, if they can't get access to credit, that's where job creation occurs. And we haven't seen employment begin to recover on a sustainable basis yet. But there are policy changes and perhaps some infrastructure investments that might help pull forward some job creation that might occur later. So one of those areas would be infrastructure investment. Um, we looked at everything from highway and surface transportation investment to investment in renewable energies, solar, biofuels, clean coal technology, all the way to nuclear. We also looked at next generation air traffic control system and pulling forward some of those investments that we need to make. And if we were to speed up the process of making those investments, not just in the public sector, but through public-private partnerships, it would have a huge impact. Uh, for example, we estimate that over each of the next three years, employment would be higher by about 3.5 million on an annual basis. That translates into roughly $470 billion in output per year, and that would be here in the near term. In terms of policy changes, we're looking at first reducing the corporate income tax rate to match uh, the OECD average or other uh, advanced uh, industrial economies. Um, it would take it down by about 13 percentage points to match the OECD average. We're today, we're the second highest in the world after Japan. Uh, the second scenario we looked at was increasing the R&D tax credit by 25 percent and perhaps more importantly making it permanent. And the third policy change we evaluated was were there ways to modernize some of the controls that we have on exports of technology such that we could capture a larger market share while not harming nuclear proliferation uh, but essentially allowing commercially available products especially in the technology area, uh, be made available to some countries such as India or China. In essence, you can't sell a 386 chip from the United States to China, but other countries are selling them 386 chips. And we just haven't taken a step back and said, this doesn't make commercial sense. If other advanced economies are selling these products to China, why would we preclude ourselves from participating in that market? Most of these policy adjustments and infrastructure investments really look at competitiveness and how can the United States become more competitive internationally, which allows us to attract more investment both domestically and from foreign sources, especially increasing our exports. And as other countries around the world are making these major investments in next generation um, smart grid technologies, the United States has fallen behind and so infrastructure becomes a competitiveness issue, not just a domestic concern.